Actually, it was a lot like camping. I don't like camping. Greetings, one and all, and welcome to Tom's Hit Parade. By the way, I invite you to hit that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up if you like what you see, share this video with your friends, and leave me your thoughts down in the comment section. I'd really appreciate it. So, how's everybody been? Long time no see. What did I miss? Yes, um, it was not my intention to be gone from YouTube for an entire entire month. Uh, this It was a mixture of things that uh, kept me off of the tube, uh, most, notably, most notably of which uh, Mother Nature decided to give us a little uh, doink on the head here to remind us that uh, we're not the one in charge. She is. Uh, yes, those of you who might not be aware, uh, if you haven't paid attention to the news or the weather lately, because it was both, a uh, major, major ice storm up here in Oregon a couple weeks weekends ago. It was uh, the uh, Martin Luther King Day weekend. Uh, it was it was pretty huge. We were out of power with uh, for six days, and some people actually in the service area just got their power back yesterday. It was that bad. It uh, yeah, the our power company said that uh, it was the worst natural naturally occurring power outage, weather-related power outage they have ever had. Uh, like something like 80 to eighty to 90 percent of their power in infrastructure, you know, the poles and the wires, had been knocked down by trees and tree limbs and stuff. So it was nuts. And yeah, just in our little uh, one and three quarters acre lot, uh, we lost, oh, eight or ten trees and a whole bunch of tree limbs. Uh, if you've been if you've been watching me for a while, you might remember uh, Snowpocalypse 2019. That was my personal nickname for it. Apparently, a lot of people uh, uh, that nickname kind of got adopted by uh, uh, amongst other people. Our power company they referred to it as Snowpocalypse 2019. Uh, we lost a lot of tree limbs and a couple of trees in that storm, and this one, in terms of yard debris, was just maybe just a little bit worse than. 2019. So uh, we've got a lot of cleanup to do uh, out in the yard uh, as soon as the weather noticeably improves, uh, you know, a month or so down the road. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it, let me, uh, I'm gonna, I gotta warn you before I go any further, this video is gonna feel a little bit clunky. It's gonna be a little bit more like a live stream. I've got my notes here. I'm gonna follow my notes. I'm gonna be referring to them several times. Um, and I'm gonna get get a little real with you uh, with this video. I tried to record this, you know, year in review and my favorite albums countdown videos all in one video. Tried to do that last weekend, didn't go so well. So um, I'm just kind of redoing. I'm gonna be doing them in two separate videos, and this one is probably not going to be so much a year in review as it is, well, maybe a blend of a year in review and uh, what's coming up because. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, I'm going to kind of get real with you guys. I have been less enthusiastic about YouTubing lately, uh, quite a bit less, and that happens from time to time, but it seems to have been lasting a lot longer this time than previously. I don't intend to shut my channel down completely. I will still be making videos. Um, it's just, you know, hopefully I will get my mojo back. I've got a theme week coming up in February. Uh, which is maybe by the time you see this video, that will be this month. Uh, this is the end of January that I'm re recording this. Um, and uh, yeah, that, that will be like five videos in five days, so that'll be a nice little burst of content. Uh, but I might be giving you less content going forward. Uh, I've got one or two other um, specific videos I've got in the near future planned. Uh, but yeah, I'm not sure, you know, this this all depends on if I get my mojo back for YouTubing. I've, I've even gotten a little less enthusiastic about watching other YouTubers' channels. So I don't know what it is. I don't know if, if burnout is setting in for real this time, or or if it is just a passing thing and it's just taking a little longer to pass this time. But uh, yeah, just I just wanted to put that out to you guys real quick, and I also wanted to just catch you guys up with uh, what I've been doing. Um, yeah, it's... Uh, as I said, the ice storm was uh, two weekends ago. I was going to do a video the weekend before, and I was actually just setting up to record what became this video the day that the ice storm hit, uh, Saturday, the, the Saturday before the uh, Martin Luther King Day, whichever that was, the 13th? I don't know. And just as I was setting up, the power went out. And uh, as I mentioned, we were out of power for six days. 
Uh, yeah, we've already had a little cleanup. Uh, everything in the refrigerator in the house had to go, obviously, because it was, uh, you know, six days didn't do good for the, fr for the fridge. So, uh, you know, that cleanup and cleaning up the house. And uh, we did okay uh, in terms of the house. No damage uh, to the property. That was the main thing. Um, uh, you might recall, my uh, longtime viewers also might recall that a few years ago, we uh, put a new roof on the house, we re-roofed the house, and we also installed a uh, wood stove in the uh, inside the house for, to provide us with heat, because we did not have a wood stove during Snowpocalypse 2019, and uh, we were out of power for four days, and after three days, we couldn't, uh, you know, three days in a cold house in the wintertime with no heat doesn't do good. And also, we live, uh, we rely on a well for our water, so, and of course the well is powered by a pump, so no electricity, no wa no running water, so uh, showers are a good thing. Uh, three days without showers is not a great thing, so, uh, so yeah, after three days we chickened out and went to a hotel. This was in 2019, and of course, uh, about an hour after we checked into the hotel, our neighbor called and said, hey, our power is back. So, uh, but uh, this time, even with the, uh, the wood stove, we were actually able to, it's got a flat top on it, so we had, you know, you, it's got room enough to put uh, little pans, saucepans, frying pans, tea kettles, so we were able to, you know, make ourselves some little makeshift hot meals here and there. Uh, and of course, stay warm. Uh, and of course, in the, uh, you know, so, so that was something we lasted longer than we probably would have otherwise. Uh, but after, you know, I think it was, this was four days. We lasted four days, but, you know, as I said, showers, we can't go without showers for more than a few days. So we actually went into a hotel and it was actually two days uh, after that, that we finally, before we finally got our power back. And, uh, and the roof, if we hadn't redone the roof when we did, uh, our house would probably be in a, a world of hurt right now because after all was said and done, my brother climbed up on the roof to uh, clear the debris off. Lots of tree branches hit that roof, and a couple of them shook the house. And this is a manufactured home, not an actual, you know, stick-built foundation home. But but still, you know, if it's enough to shake the house, it actually shook the, the shade from my light fixture off Thank goodness it's plastic and not uh, glass, so it uh, it just bounced on the floor and it didn't even crack. So, thank goodness for for small favors. But anyway, uh, yes, lots of tree branches hit the roof after we cleared off the roof. Um, my brother went up, and after the ice melted, two little holes on the roof, one about as big around as your thumb and one about as big around as your pinky. So, that was all the damage. He was able to patch them up with some flashing for now. Uh, when the war the weather warms up and spring comes around, he will go up and make and fix it permanently. But uh, yeah, we were so lucky with, you know, in an innumerable number of ways, innumerable innumerable number of ways, uh, we were very very lucky. Um, first day when we got into town, it was still icy out, and I was a klutz and I slipped on the ice. Uh, I just lightly sprained my wrist about four. Three or four days later, it was 90% back to normal. Still a little bit tender, but uh, yeah, I could have broken my wrist. I could have broken my ankle. I could have hit my head, but, you know, I was lucky. And I got a little bit of a, the um, big gunk, whatever it was. I don't know if it was a parking lot rash or what it was that was stuck in there. It was a big black blob on there. It's gone now, but you can see a couple little uh, little specks there that are still there. But uh, yeah, that uh, that was the other the only other injury I got from that. So, yes, we were lucky in a ridiculous number of ways. Uh, but still, you know, I'm not a fan of camping. I never have been. So, you know, going without running water and electricity for a while is uh, not fun. Uh, I, I kind of wish that I were a little more hardy than that. But, uh, well, what can you do? We've been spoiled with uh, our electricity. And anyway, to, to avoid going on with that, uh, and that's one reason why I'm splitting this stuff up into two videos. That one video was uh, ridiculously long. Uh, so yeah, that's that's what I've been going on with lately. And uh, another reason why uh, I will be kind of trimming, uh, trimming back my content, maybe. Uh, I've, I was going to say, you know, I'm, I may only go down to like maybe two videos a month, but that's kind of what I've been doing lately anyway, the last year or so. So you might not even notice a difference in the amount of content I'm giving you. But anyway, uh, the yard cleanup is uh, its something we're going to be busy with for uh, several weekends. And uh, so, yeah, that's going to be occupying some time. And uh, 
Yeah, I was going to give give. Bleh. I was going to bring you the video last weekend, right after our power came back, but our internet was a little uh, wonky. You know, I mean, hey, we're, I'm thankful we got internet back as soon as we did after the power came back. But still, you know, uh, and we were also still we were still cleaning up the house. You know, cleaning up the dishes that we couldn't put in the dishwasher, emptying out the refrigerator, throwing that stuff in the garbage, all the little stuff you do after life has been giving you a curveball. You know, you got to clean up afterward, right? So, uh, but uh, yeah, where am I going? Where was I going with this? I, I mentioned this is going to be more like a live stream, kind of weird stream of consciousness stuff. But anyway, um, yeah, I was going to give you this video last weekend, uh, but yeah, it didn't happen. And uh, oh, oh yeah, th that's where I was going. Uh, <laughs> yesterday or this this weekend, our power, our internet was out again. I'm not sure why, um, but. I, so, you know, I had nothing else to do, I and I did not feel up to doing the, this video yesterday, or uh, this weekend, whenever it was. The days are kind of blurred up, so uh didn't feel like doing a video, so I just put some CDs in my CD player and sat back and listened. And it was kind of nice to just, you know, empty my head, read a couple of magazines while I'm just listening to music, not worrying about doing a video or anything. So, uh and this was, you know, old stuff, not new music. So... That was unbelievably relaxing. So that's another thing that, uh, another reason why I might be dialing back on the YouTube a little bit. I don't know. You'll have to just wait and see. But uh, also, in the other video, part two of these two videos will be my favorite albums of the year. And I'm honestly not sure if this year might be, well, or 2023 might be my my last uh, favorite albums new releases of the year video. Um, my listening habits have kind of been changing over the last several months. I've noticed, uh, and this whole year actually, I just did not pay attention much attention at all, at all to new music. Not as much as I have in years past. So that's why this list is going to be a little weird. My uh, favorite albums of the year list. And I'm not sure if this video is going to be is going to upload first, or my favorite albums of the year video is going to upload first. I might upload them to both in the same day. I don't know, but uh, yeah. So that video is not going to be what you expected. Yes, my usual year-end spectacular-ish is not quite so spectacular-ish this year. I don't know if it's even ish to begin with, honestly. But uh, so yeah, um, so yeah. That's that's kind of where I am. I'm going to take a drink here real quick. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about my uh, some music uh, listening habits, things that I, my favorite stuff not related to new releases in music, you know, um, noteworthy things about music from this year in this video. And I will also, um, I think that's what I think I'm going to do next. I'm going to divide this video into chapters. You'll see chapter markers in the description and on the uh, progress line so you can snap to whichever part you want to see. Uh, I'm going to try and keep, give this video some amount of structure. <laughs> uh, wish me luck. Um, I'm going to do a little in memoriam segment, just talk about a few of the noteworthy uh, musicians and artists who passed on in 2023. And then I'll talk about uh, my year in music and my, or my year not related to music and my year in music. Uh, I just talked a little bit about my, well, my past month anyway. And a couple of music headlines. I'm not going to do the more the longer list of music headlines that I did last year, uh, just because I didn't have time to concentrate on that. And some of my favorite music YouTubers that I've been watching over the year, the the, the handful that I still watch, uh, and that kind of stuff. So just kind of, this is going to be a little bit of a catch-all video, as well as a catching up, which is what I just did. So that part's out of the way. So, uh, yes, let me refer, refer to my handy-dandy notes here. Uh... Yes, the uh, the artists that we lost in 2023, again there was quite a quite a few of them, and I'm not going to name I'm not going to give you anywhere near a complete list. This is just I, I first of all I want to keep this video reasonably short, uh, so yeah I'm just going to name the ones that uh, were kind of noteworthy to me at least a little bit, and uh, anyway, uh, among the songwriters we lost this year, Keith Reed who gave us Procol Harum's Whiter Shade of Pale. Uh, Barrett Strong, who co-wrote the Motown hits I Heard It Through the, Gra the Grapevine, Just My Imagination, and War. And Cynthia Weil, of course, uh, a Brill-building songwriter who, with her husband Barry Mann, wrote You've Lost That Love and Feeling on Broadway and Somewhere Out There, which won two Grammy Awards. 
uh, several talented and noteworthy vocalists left us in 2023. Uh, Brazilian chanteuse Astrid Gilberto passed away, legendary Brazilian artist. Uh, the last surviving original member of the Coasters, Leon Hughes, as well as Lisa Marie Presley, daughter of Elvis Presley, Catherine Anderson of the Marvelettes, and Shane McGowan of the Pogues, passed away in 2023. And there were a handful of guitar masters who passed in 2023 as well. Jeff Beck, gotta mention Jeff Beck, uh, Robbie Robertson, as well as bassists Andy Rourke of the Smiths and Steve Mackey of Pulp. We also lost two members of the Backman family, drummer Robbie and singer-guitarist Tim. Uh, also on the list of departures this year, Terry Kirkman of the Association, the founding member of the Association. Uh, he was kind of a personal thing, to me, and I, sh I should have gotten out the booklet and showed it to you. Uh, he was a friend of my mother's. My mother knew him. Uh, they they lived a few year, a few houses down from each other, and they went to high school together. And I'm going to try and find you some footage from their 50th high school reunion. Terry Kirkman organized it, and uh, they made a little video of it. And uh, I'm uh, put, it was put on DVD. I'm actually ripping the DVD to my hard drive, so hopefully I'll be able to give you a little video shot of Terry and of my mother. And I had forgotten my sister was there also. My sister accompanied my mother to it, and this was about five years before she passed. So give you a little picture of my sister, who I talked about a lot. But uh, yeah, Terry Kirkman. And he actually, my mother took the booklet from my Association two-disc anthology uh, CD collection with her to the reunion to have Terry personally autograph it for me. And she, I've also got an LP of the association that he personally autographed for my mother back in the day. So that's very, very cool. And yes, kind of a personal loss to hear that he had passed away in 2023. Uh, along with that list, uh, Randy Meister of the Eagles, a founding member of the Eagles. Uh, Fuzzy Haskins, a fu founding member of Parliament and Funkadelic. As well as Gary Wright, who gave us the song, the hit song Dreamweaver. And Steve Harwell, the lead singer of Smash Mouth. He passed away way too soon. He was still in his 50s, and he passed away. And we saw the demise of musicians from other genres. Jazz pianist Ahmad Jamal, uh, jazz saxophonist Wayne Shorter, electronic music pioneer, keyboardist, and film score composer Ryuichi Sakamoto, along with uh, New Age pianist George Winston, as well as film and TV composer Gerald Freed, who is most famous for scoring episodes of Star Trek, the original series, and Mission Impossible. And of course, we cannot forget the biggest names we lost in 2023. Burt Bacharach, Jimmy Buffett, Sinead O'Connor, Gordon Lightfoot, David Crosby, Harry Belafonte, Tina Turner, and of course, Tony Bennett. So yes, a long list the, the, the list of music passings every year seems to get longer every year, doesn't it? Just a shame. And uh, yes, more big names are uh, passing on as the years seem to go by. So uh, so yes, that is uh, Godspeed to every single one of those artists that I mentioned and all of the dozens and dozens that I did not fit on this list. Uh, it's just, you know, uh, the, the afterlife is going to be a little bit more musical and it's going to be some dandy music up there in the afterlife. My sister's enjoying a lot of good concerts up there, I think. So, uh, anyway, uh, trying to sift through my notes to see what I already mentioned and what I didn't. And yada, yada, yada. I did that first. Or I did that, I did that already. My brain is just... This video is going to be a little bit scatterbrained uh, because my brain is a little bit scatterbrained. I am still psychologically recovering from the ice storm, honestly, and from uh, the other stuff. And yes, I was going to mention... Uh, my brother and I were going to take a trip up to Seattle uh, in February. We decided to scrap that because of the uh, expenses that the ice storm incurred. We were actually going to uh, switch that down to a uh, lower budget uh, and shorter trip up to Portland. And uh, that we've decided uh, to postpone for a while. We figure we will wait until we're, we've cleaned up from the ice storm, the, the outside and the inside, and maybe give ourselves a trip to Portland as a bit of a reward for the cleanup. Uh, yes, we're gonna we're gonna need to rent a wood chipper. We're going to we're gonna be able to replenish the firewood, probably replenish and then some the firewood that we expended uh, during this uh, storm. So yes, lots of yard cleanup. So I figured uh, in this segment here I would go over my personal music uh, or my personal year, not related to music. There were some highs and lows in 2023. As we started out 2024 with a bit of a low, I'll be talking about that uh, in a year's time. 
Uh, yes, as far as the lows, get those out of the way first. Uh, back in February, I had an emergency gallbladder surgery, you might remember. Uh, that was, uh, yeah, that was a lot of fun. No, it wasn't. Uh, and at the same in the same month in February, uh, we also saw the closure of the Salem FYE store. That was unexpected. We found out about that uh, in uh, in January as we were coming home from Portland uh, that they were going to be closing up in a, in a month. And so we actually got up there, got uh, got some good deals, and they're going on a business sale. But uh, yes, it's sad to see that uh, you know that store is no longer there, and we're not able to go up there for a little day's trip, uh, a little shopping trip up there. So, and uh, also. The other uh, low in my year was in October. Uh, a co-worker in my building unexpectedly passed away. He worked up on the third floor. I worked on the, on the first floor. And uh, unfortunately, he suffered cardiac arrest at the office one day. You know, we saw, you know, the ambulance, the paramedics come, and it was absolute chaos. We had no idea what was going on until he had been uh, taken out and taken to the hospital. Uh, unfortunately, he passed away uh, overnight that night. And... Uh, I was not particularly close to him, but still, his passing hit me really hard, and, I, and I'm and i not sure why. Uh, it was just because, I mean, you know, I would see him pa in passing in the halls all the time. That's probably why, is just because, you know, that occasionally, you know, seeing him a couple, two or three times a week in passing in the halls, uh, just, you just, we just don't see him there anymore. And he always seemed to be kind of happy-go-lucky, uh, kind of cheerful, and so that's something that's... Uh, Kind of, uh, you know, it, you feel its absence, and you feel his absence when uh, he's not there, and it was also just the, uh, just the, the shock of it all that you know one day you can be working, uh, working away in your office, and you know that night you're gone, and uh, it kind of put into perspective that you know. I probably have to to paraphrase Captain Picard in a Star Trek movie, I probably have fewer days ahead of me than I have behind. And, uh, you know, I, I've been aware of that, you know, presumably anyway, you know, unless I live longer than I expect to. I, I don't expect to see the age of 100, but you never know. Uh, but yeah, it kind of puts that in perspective, uh, even though I've kind of known that in the back of my head for a while. So I guess maybe that's why it hit me so hard. And so, yes, we were actually going to take a trip to see my aunt and uncle uh, the weekend after that happened. And I was just, uh, I, it actually made me sick. I actually got, you know, sick and was feeling under the weather. Uh, from the stress of that, and uh, I could not go with uh, my mother and my brother went to see, to see my aunt and uncle, and uh, I had to stay home just because I was just feeling so run down, sick, and uh, physically and mentally and emotionally exhausted from that. Uh, so it's yeah, it was a rough year in some respects, but it was a good year in other respects. Uh, some some highs I cannot forget to mention the highs of my personal year. Uh, as I mentioned a minute ago, we went to Portland in January, had a nice little trip up to Portland to kick off the year, um, and I got my new record cabinet. My brother built this himself, and we installed it back in March, got my new record cabinet. I did a little video about it. Uh, you can look back in my videos on my channel. And, of course, the biggest, best part of the year for me, probably by far, was in May when my little brother Noah and my little sister-in-law Alyssa came for a visit. It was a quick visit. But it was a very, very fun, fun-filled, fun-packed trip. We went out to the coast. We went up to Portland for a few days. Uh, they weren't. They didn't stay here for nearly as long as I was hoping they would. But a short trip is better than none at all. A short visit better than none at all. And had a huge, huge amount of fun. Did some videos. Made some videos out of that as well. Uh, you can look in my past videos, and you will see those. So yeah, lots of fun to be had in that. In those respects. And next I thought I would talk about my year in music, meaning, uh, you know, the favorite stuff I listened to, uh, favorite stuff I bought, and all that stuff. Yeah, last year I did a whole list of my favorite purchases of 2023. Didn't uh, keep track of them, and I was actually on one sort of a uh, spending kick relating to a uh, the theme week that I'm planning on doing in uh, February that I mentioned, uh, so I don't want to spoil any of that. Uh, although some of you guys are probably already know what the theme week is going to be about. But anyway, so a lot of my purchasing was occupied with one specific artist, which I'll mention later. But I did have a couple of favorite purchases otherwise, and uh, favorite discoveries, and uh, deep dives that I've done, all that stuff. Um, my favorite artist discovery, leave it to my little brother Noah, who lives in Oklahoma and had never visited Oregon until last year, to uh, clue me into an artist 
who actually is from Oregon that I had never heard about. Go figure. Uh, the guy's name is Todd Snyder. He's a uh, rock singer-songwriter. Uh, very, very witty lyrics, and he's got some good hooks in some of his songs. And uh, Noah gave me this CD, uh, Songs for the Daily Planet. Hey, and there's another thing is uh, when it has a Superman reference, you know, it's, it, 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 does, it does not hurt the cause of the uh, album. So, uh, so, yes, I listened to this album. One of my favorite new, new discoveries of the year, probably, yeah, the favorite new discovery of the year. Liked him so much that I decided to uh, continue on in picking up his albums, uh, his uh, sophomore album, Step Right Up. And his uh, next album, uh, Viva Satellite, not Via Satellite, and uh, another album, uh, The Devil You Know. Picked all those up. Uh, some of them I picked up in Portland. And uh, yeah, I can't remember. I think that was when when Noah, when Noah was with me up in Portland. Uh, and yeah, two trips up to Portland, they kind of blurred together. You can you can understand, especially at my age. <laughs> I'm just teeing up the uh, old age jokes for Noah. That's the one something he loves to do is tease me about my age. Anyway, um, uh, sit up here. Uh, I took a couple of couple of deep dives in uh, music this year, and some of these. Yes, this first artist I picked them up uh, in January when I was up in Portland with my brother. I've had a couple of their albums for a while, uh, in a Canadian rock group called Sloan. I've had pretty together and action packed for several years now. And really like them. And I also picked up their latest album last year called Steady. Really enjoyed it. So I decided, what the heck? And uh, was able to find most of their albums, uh, most of their CDs, on one trip up to Portland back last January. So I now have this many of their CDs. So yeah. Uh, I'm missing three of their more recent albums, and I think that's it. So yeah. Took a deep, deep dive into Sloan. Uh, great band. Uh, of course, I pretty much already knew that from the three albums that I had. But uh, yeah, lots of fun with them. Uh, kind of power pop, kind of rock, uh, sort of a mixture of garage rock and power pop, sort of. Uh, really good stuff. And uh, there's another band. They're also they also happen to be Canadian, coincidentally. And I think that's right. Yeah, uh, Noah gave me another uh, one of their CDs also, and I think it was this one that he gave me. Uh, we are the same, the Tragically Hip. Uh, yes, he gave me this one, which was my first exposure to them. I've heard of Tragically Hip uh, for a long time, of course, but never gave them a try. And uh, so, yeah, I picked up that one, really enjoyed it. And uh, thanks to a couple of eBay lots, I picked up several others. So, yeah. And I, I think this is all that I... I picked them all up off my uh, shelf and listened to them. So, yeah. Been, been digging the Tragically Hip uh, for quite a while, uh, for several months now, and uh, hope to add to their collection, uh, uh, fill in the gaps on that collection as well. So lots of good stuff. And uh, actually, let's see. Oh, another deep dive. I've got stuff on my lap, uh, kind of, so, I'm, so I'm kind of disorganized. Another deep dive I decided to take was uh, thanks to a couple of box sets at House of Records, I don't know why. Is it, for one thing, it was the price. They were, they were really good prices, and I've heard this guy little, some of this guy's stuff uh, a while ago and didn't dislike it. I kind of liked it, so I decided to go ahead and take a deep dive. Thanks to a couple of box sets, Garth Brooks. Uh, this was uh, his first collector's edition box, uh, limited series box set. His first six albums, all, and uh, this was just uh, eighteen dollars. So yeah, three bucks a piece. They were in absolutely spotless condition, so how could I not pick it up? So yes, it's got those, those first uh, six studio albums. Good stuff there. And uh, a couple of months after that, there was another Garth Brooks box set. <laughs> and this one was $25, and it was still sealed. And this is uh, Blame It All on My Roots, Five Decades of Influences. So yes, it's got uh, two DVDs, uh, yeah, two DVDs, a concert DVD and a DVD of his music videos, uh, a two-disc set of his greatest hits, as well as four covers albums, which are exclusive to this collection. Uh, yeah, country classics, he covers a bunch of country class classic country songs. Uh, Blue-Eyed Soul, the title of that one is uh, self-explanatory. Classic rock, as well as a melting pot, which covers some singer-songwriter stuff, uh, some... AM radio or yacht rock stuff. 
um, Wild World by Cat Stevens, Mrs. Robinson by um, uh, Simon Garfunkel, Operator by Jim Croce. So, yeah. And uh, Maggie Me by Rod Stewart. So, yes, I thought this was... And I, I'm a bit of a sucker for covers albums, so I decided I had to pick this up and give it a try. Um, I have not gotten around to listening to any of those uh, 14 CDs yet. <laughs> I know, I know. And that's kind of been the par for the course, and that's something that I intend to do. Now that Bargain Bag is gone and out of the way, I will have I won't have those eight CDs to that I have to listen to each month. So I'll have much more time, hopefully, to uh, get rid of this backlog of listening. Uh, but yes, now then uh, thought I would talk about my favorite purchases of the month or of the year. Uh, just a few of those. First of all. Um, gotten way back into soundtracks. Uh, I, I did last year too, I think. So yeah, last year it's kind of continuing in, in, into this year. Uh, one of my favorite movies and one of my favorite, one of my favorite soundtracks, not by this other guy that I'll be talking about uh, soon on my channel. Uh, the Fugitive by uh, the uh, soundtrack is by the score is by James Newton Howard, and actually the saxophonist featured on this is Wayne Shorter, who passed away in 2023. But yes, this is the two-disc limited edition CD by La La, La La Land Records. It's quite pricey, but I was able to splurge at the beginning of the year and pick this up. I've been wanting it for a long, long time. So yes, pick that up. And then the rest of them, the other two I'm going to mention, which are non-soundtracks, they're, I would call them box sets, but neither one of them is actually in a box. But they are four-disc sets, both of them. Uh, Sam Cooke. Picked this up uh, just a couple of months ago at Epic Seconds for $15. Four discs of Sam Cooke's greatest hits. Uh, he is one of my favorite classic soul artists. And uh, up till now, I'd only had one hits collection, uh, one disc hits collection of his. But yes, this has just about whatever you could, everything you could possibly want from Sam Cooke. And uh, the other set, which is also four discs, and also from a classic African-American artist, but this one is a blues and uh, a, he was kind of blues. He was basically a progenitor of rock and roll. One of the pioneers of rock and roll, I guess if you, if you could say. Fats Domino. I had, and again, this was, I just had one single disc hits, hits collection of Fats Domino. I had no idea that um, they had put out a four disc hits collection, but uh, here it is. 100 songs of Fats Domino, 25 per disc. I could not pass up this collection. Uh, I had to have it. I absolutely love Fats Domino, uh, one of the most underrated, I think, um, rock and roll pioneers. You know, Chuck Berry gets all the attention, and uh, Little Richard gets uh, most of the attention as well. So, uh, but uh, Fats Domino is uh, must be heard and uh, appreciated. So, uh, yeah, four discs of Fats Domino, and the, that was uh, four dollars per disc. So 16 bucks for that box set. So I think I did pretty well in terms of purchases for the year. Uh, pardon the shaking of the uh, camera here. And uh, so, uh, oh, let's go on to, let's just talk about a couple of music headlines. Uh, I have just three of those to mention and I have a, a couple of little brief thoughts on those. Uh, back in February of last year, uh, we su we suffered. I started to say suffered. Celebrated. Don't take that as a Freudian slip. Honest. I, I, I'm not I, I'm not averse to hip-hop. Uh, but yes, we celebrated back in February of 2023 the 50th anniversary of hip-hop. It's been around for 50 years. Uh, and I remember back in the beginning, people said it was not going to last. People said it was a fad. It was just a, a, a little trend. It, was, it wasn't going to last. But here we are 50 years later. Uh, I don't remember its actual birth back in... Um, this would have been uh, 70, 73. I, in, in a way, I can't remember. I can't believe it's lasted that long. Or, or it's, it started that early, uh, to, uh, meant to say. But uh, yeah, I do remember, I don't remember its birth, but I do remember back in the early 80s when uh, it uh, basically hit the mainstream with its, its, yeah, with its exposure on MTV. Or was a, uh, it got its own show. and uh, Yo! MTV Raps was the name of the show. So uh, that last, you know, and then if hip hop just exploded from there, and uh, it hit the mainstream, and uh, it's it's here to stay. Obviously, it's uh, probably the most popular genre. I think even rock and pop are taking a backseat to hip hop lately, and uh, or at least hip hop hip hop seems to have uh, infiltrated or influenced basically every other genre of music. 
you know, aside from country, essentially. Well, actually, no, there there are country rap acts also, so it's everywhere. So anyway, yes, uh, happy belated birthday to the genre of hip hop. It's here to stay, and I'm I, I'm not unokay with that. Let's just put it that way. I, I cannot begrudge anybody who is a fan of hip hop. Uh, it, and and I've got a little hip hop in my collection. I'll admit I'm not a huge fan of it, but I've got a little bit here and there. So, uh, and anyway, um, the next headline I thought I'd mention: uh, AI began infiltrating music in 2023. Uh, not sure how I feel about that. It's a dangerous thing. Uh, yes, we've. Uh, I, I've. I have not even listened to that new Beatles song, just because it was partly uh, manufactured with AI. Yeah, I don't know. It's just, uh, I mean, I remember back in the 80s when artists started making greater use of synths and computers in music. Uh, but at least there were humans at the controls of uh, the computer, the computer influence in music back then. So, uh, yeah, but this, it's just kind of, you know, when computers can actually think and create things themselves, it's getting a little dangerous. I mean, you know, have we not have we not learned from Terminator 2? You know, I mean, the whole plot line of Terminator 2 was they decimated mankind because Skynet became self-aware and it was an artificial intelligence and it, you know, it decided, okay, I'm in charge. Bye, humans. Have we not learned from that? Come on. Anyway, maybe I'm getting a little bit too doom and gloom, but uh, I don't know. Just, you know, we got to you know, measure, we, we got to uh, meter or temper AI's involvement in uh, everything. So, including music. Music needs to stay human created, please. Uh, anyway, on to the other headline that I have on my list. Summer saw an epidemic of stupid concert goers throwing things at performers. Everyone from BB Rexa to Harry Styles to Kelsey Ballerini to Drake got stuff thrown at them from stupid, rude, a-holes in the audience. Aren't you people there to actually listen to the music and enjoy the music and not throw things at people? Do you actually want to hurt the performers that you paid your hard-earned money, um, an obscene amount of money, to get tickets to go see? What's wrong with you people? Seriously. Um, and this just adds to the list of reasons why I don't go to concerts anymore. The crowds and the noise are just a little too much for me now, and now I have to worry about them you know, getting pelted in the head with cell phones and with what? What is wrong with people? Seriously, I I just I, I could sit here and just wonder about that for forever. I I don't know. It's just people are I just when I thought that people would get as stupid as they as they could get, then I start hearing about people actually deliberately throwing things at the performance that they paid my hard-earned money to see. Anyway. Uh, let's cut that rant there short uh, before I keep going. Uh, anyway, um, the, the next topic, and I think this might be the last topic for this video, is I thought I would talk about the YouTubers that I enjoy. Uh, most of these, if not all of these, are listed in my description below, a favorite fellow YouTubers, but I thought I would just mention them and give them actual shout-outs in my video. Uh, the YouTubers I discovered this year, I think, 2022 and 2023, by the way, disclaimer, when I am when I talk about this year in this video, I'm referring to 2023. Duh. But uh, yes, the 2022 and 2023 are kind of blurring together. So I think I discovered these YouTubers this year. But uh, Jack Burial of the CD Cave, he's a lot of fun. He's a Canadian. I think he loves it, lives up in the Toronto, er, Toronto area. He's lots of fun, too. Uh, he, he shows off his CD halls and what's in his collection. Lots of fun. Uh, Stephen Schnee, the CD Junkie. Uh, he's a lot of fun to listen to. I cannot believe I didn't discover him sooner. Uh, very, lots of fun. He's very articulate and very knowledgeable. Very knowledgeable about music. And uh, those two guys um, I highlighted mainly because they kind of give a lot of love to the CD format. I still love vinyl. Uh, hence, you know, this stuff there. You can see that I still love vinyl. But I have gotten way back into CDs in the last couple of years just because... Vinyl, especially new vinyl, the prices are absolutely ridiculous. And uh, so, you know, CDs are much more affordable. And uh, yeah, so anyway, yes, lots of love to the fellow CD YouTubers. And yeah, I've, I've kind of fallen off on watching the channels more focused on the vinyl community. I, I, I watch the CD channels more. Uh, but anyway, 
uh, other favorite YouTubers from previous years. Uh, and again, I hope I'm getting my years straight. Uh, I don't think I think I've been watching these prior to 2023. Uh, the Infectious Groove Music Channel, uh, Russ and Lauren, they are so much fun to watch. Uh, that that is one of the channels I subscribe to probably a hundred channels, and I only only listen to about a dozen or watch about a dozen, uh, re you know, dedicatedly every every single video. Uh, you know, the most of the other ones I just kind of watch every once in a while when, you know, they have something I might want to watch. But uh, these channels that I mentioned today, I watch pretty much every video of theirs. Uh, Russ and Lauren, um, Infectious Groove, a great couple. They have great chemistry together and great sense of humor. And I just love watching them. And uh, they're so much fun. It's kind of like sitting and uh, talking with your, your next door neighbors or your friends about music. There's just a lot, of, a lot of fun. Then we have Briar's Music Showcase. Uh, he started out as Briar's CD Showcase, but uh, he started getting a little bit into the vinyl, but he is more, uh, still he's more about the CD than the vinyl, so he's still lots of fun. And then, uh, let's see, uh, oh, this Sonic Obsession. This is a pair of gents from, uh, from Canada, from Nova Scotia. They are lots of fun, and one of the interesting things about them is they are actually older than I am, uh, you know, most music YouTubers are younger than I am, and but there are a few, that, you know, and there are several that are of my generation, but there are a couple that are uh, of an older generation than me, and that uh, the Sonic, this Sonic Obsession, is one of those guys. They have a great, ta uh, great variety in their music tastes. They listen to a lot, uh, mostly classic rock, 60s, 70s, but they listen to a lot of 80s, and they listen to some new stuff too. So, uh, yes, yeah, a very, very well-rounded. Um, taste in music, and lots of fun to listen to them talk about music as well. And then a couple of other channels, and uh, again, these guys seem to be tend to be a little bit more lean toward the CD than the vinyl. Uh, Rudy on Duty. Uh, this guy is from Southern California, somewhere in the L.A. area, I think. Yes, uh, Rudy on Duty. He's, he's a lot of fun. He shows his uh, CD hauls and talks about the benefits of CDs as opposed to vinyl, the cost effectiveness, cost effectiveness of them, and he also hunts for uh, audio gear and uh, uh, cleans it up, tunes it up, and resells it. So hey, whatever floats your boat on that, it's a you know more power to him. Uh, so yes, he there's there's some great deals on music gear as well as CDs. Are you know he can buy CDs for a buck in a lot of places. So uh, he takes a lot of advantage of that and uh, uh, touts the virtues of it on his YouTube channel. And Alan Rosenberg, the Alan Rosenberg Show, he's a lot of fun to listen to as well. Uh, he goes through uh, year by year his favorite albums from years past and uh, talks a lot about a lot of other stuff as well. His haul videos, a lot of these guys do haul videos and stuff. So, uh, yes, lots of fun uh, watching all those guys. And uh, there are probably some others that I've forgotten uh, to mention here in this video. But uh, I didn't want to make this video too long. So, uh, yes, I guess I'm going to cut it short here. Uh, I hope I was able to uh, make this video somewhat coherent. Uh, yes, we will see where things go um, in the uh, upcoming year. Where am I? I'm looking for... Yeah, sorry. Uh, preoccupied with uh, calling up my notes on my uh, phone. Um, yes, we'll see what the year brings us in terms of uh, content for my channel. I don't intend to uh, stop this channel, as I said. Even though you know, hey, I've been going, I've been going at it for six years, and I think six years, six years has been a pretty long run. But as I said, I've found so much relaxation and therapy, really, uh, in just sitting back, not doing a YouTube video some weekends, and just listening to old music. And I'm kind of thinking maybe my listening habits will lean back toward older music uh, more than newer music uh, in uh, 2024 and the years to come. We'll find that out. But uh, upcoming, or it may have already posted, will be my favorite albums of 2023. Uh, so stay tuned for that uh, coming up very soon here. But anyway, that'll do it for this video. Be sure to like it if you liked it. And before you go, drop me some feedback in the comments section. I'd love to know what you think. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that bell icon to catch my new videos, and hit my username to browse my old videos. Links to my socials and my favorite fellow YouTubers are in the description below. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. And remember, life's too short to be a music snob.